Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. Now I like to be pretty self-sufficient, but one thing I can't do is cut my own hair. But at the moment, that seems like a skill that I might need. So I'm going to make a mirror to help me do that. I've got all these thin strips of oak I've been saving, but first I need to get them all down to the same size. I've got this jig that goes into the thicknesser. You can only raise the table so far, and this allows me to thickness some really thin strips. With two faces cleaned up, and all to the same thickness, then I need to do the edges. So I get them in the vise, and plane them down. Now I can get them glued up into panels, so I'm making three panels, two A4 size and one A3 size. I got these mirrors from Amazon and they're made from acrylic because I didn't trust myself with glass. I'll put links down below like normal. I use these panel clamps I made a few years ago to keep all the pieces aligned. Then I can get some other clamps on to pull all the joints tight. When the glue's dried, I can get the clamps off and get all three panels sanded down. I use the mirrors as a reference to set the fence on the table saw. Then I can get the panels cut down to size. It wasn't that long ago I made a mirror, so I had some of this adhesive especially designed for mirrors left over. I applied it to the back of all the mirrors then I could get them installed onto the panels. Now I can start work on the frames to hold them. So I've got all these random scraps of oak that I've been saving up thinking one day I'll use them. Well this is that day. As all these bits were different sizes I got two surfaces planed down and then ripped to all the same width. With that done, I can then bring them all down to the same thickness. I want the frame to have a groove to accept the mirror, so I swap out my blade to my 5mm grooving one. I raise the blade up to 1cm. I'm going to need to make two passes to cut this groove, so I set the fence up to make the first pass. Then I use this magnetic guide to keep the material tight against the fence. Now I can pass all the pieces through, making the groove. As I say, I'm going to need to do two passes. So when I've cut the first one, I can then flip it round and push it back through. This will make the groove wider and also will make sure it's in the center. With all the slots cut, I could have a test fit and work out the sizes the frames needed to be. I could then get the end pieces cut on the miter saw. Even though I'm making different sized mirrors, this dimension is the same on all three, so I can get six pieces cut to size. The longer edges need a tongue to fit in the groove, and that needs to be one centimeter, so I can get that marked out and work out how long they need to be. I can then get them cut to length on the miter saw as well. To cut the tongue, I raise the blade to it's just starting at the groove, and then I can nibble away at each end with a stop block set up. With a stop set, I can cut in one centimeter from each end and make all four cuts, and then I can come back without the stop and just nibble away that last bit of waste. With all the tongues cut, I give it a quick sand down, and then we can look at getting this put together. First, I get the protective film removed because it'd be really difficult to do later on. Then I'm going to use some PU glue for this. This stuff expands so it fills any gaps in the joints. And my joints are a bit gappy. It says it works best if you moisten one surface, so I'm just giving them a bit of a spritz. Then I can get the glue put in place. I have used this stuff before. I used it on the workshop base, and it's incredibly messy stuff if you get it on your hands, so I'm wearing gloves. I can then get everything slid together and the nature of this joint really helps keep everything square. I get all three of them clamped up and then I leave them to dry for about half an hour. 
You can see here how the glue's expanded to fill the joint. When the glue's set, any excess can just be removed quite easily with a chisel. I prefer PVA wood glue, and it's stronger. So if I was to do this again, I would spend a bit more time setting up the cuts on some test pieces, so I just had better joints to start with. I needed a way to attach this to the wall, and what better way to hang it up than to use some mirror plates. I mark around them, and then use a chisel to cut out the waste, like if you was fitting a hinge. Before I get any hardware installed, I'm going to get some finish on, and I don't even need to tell you what I'm going to use. These were some really scrappy pieces, some with some quite a lot of sporting in, but with the oil on, they really look nice. I think I'd definitely use this joinery method again if I ever need to make some cabinet doors. So the mirrors need to be hinged, so I've got some brass piano hinges that I'm just going to mark out how long I need them to be, and then I can use a hacksaw to cut them to length. Unfortunately, I've snapped my self-centering drill bit, and I need to get a new one, so I just used a brad point bit very carefully to drill some pilot holes. Then I got the two mirrors joined together with some clamps, and got them screwed into place. The last job is to just get those mirror hanging plates installed. And that's it all done. So it sits flat against the wall, but then can be moved out. And what this should allow me to do is see the back of my head while I'm using some clippers. So in the next video, you can all laugh at me, or maybe I'll just be wearing a hat. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreons, and please subscribe for more videos.